guys, welcome to yet another episode of Microsoft ERP Beginners Tutorial Series. As you all know already from the caption, today's episode is going to be on the currency. So we will be uh, getting started with the currency setup, the currency exchange rate setup in this particular episode. So with that note, let's get into the episode. Hi guys, welcome back. So let's get started with the currency setup. Uh, so very very beginning in this series in the first episode or the second episode we did uh, Created this ledger related setup and we did map the chart of account the calendars and everything in this particular ledger related setup Which is a uh, one of the key setup. I should say it's a uh, heart of this particular legal entity and nothing works without this particular setup in this particular legal entity. We did uh, did this in some of our very initial episode, especially the chart of account. We do have multiple chart of accounts already available in the system and every chart of account do have a specific group or specific set of main accounts predefined. And we did create a new chart of account and we did add all our own main account within this particular chart of account. But how do this particular legal entity know which group of main accounts to be used or which chart of accounts to be used is when we are tagging that particular chart of account against this particular ledger. So now this ADC model legal entity knows that the main accounts within this chart of account is need to be displayed in any of the transaction that we will be doing in this particular legal entity. For example, when we try to post the general journal and we try to choose a ledger account in the debit or the credit section, it did show the list of ledger account that is being retrieved from this particular chart of account. Likewise, we did map the default calendar. We also mapped the account structure. Example, we also defined uh, the account structure for uh, expense account which is going to be the three series and the account structure is going to be the department and we also define some advanced rules for that particular expense account like for example this particular account whenever it is chosen you have some additional dimension like a worker that uh, will be appearing so all these are something that we have defined and we have set up against the ledger right um, so we've already seen all this and this setup in detail in some of our previous episode, but more about it we will of course cover even in the future episodes. But in today's uh, video, our primary focus is as I said going to be on the currency. So we are going to focus pretty much on this particular tab, especially focusing these three fields which is going to be your accounting currency, reporting currency and your uh, currency exchange rate type and in the next episode that is in the next week episode we will be covering about the realized gain realized loss because these are the main account or posting profiles related with the foreign currency reevaluation process so we will cover the foreign currency reevaluation process in the next video during which we will discuss about the foreign transactions and we will discuss about why do we need to set up this posting profile. So for now, let's forget about this tab. Let's just focus on these three fields um, and let's try to explore that. So um, as when we created this particular ledger, we also created the currency and we did also tag the accounting currency. So when I say accounting currency is an INR, that means that this particular legal entity is like an ADC Motor India Private Limited because I'm assuming it to be an Indian company. So that's the reason why I have tagged this company with a Indian currency. Okay, this Indian rupees. And um, in this case, the reporting currency is also Indian rupees. I cannot change the reporting currency now because I can only do the changes to the reporting currency or accounting currency as soon as I create a legal entity and before posting any transaction. At this moment, I cannot do any changes to the reporting accounting currency. So let's assume that uh, my current legal entity is ADC Motor India Private Limited and this particular legal entity is having a headquarters which is in US and uh, I need to do all my financial reporting in USD instead of INR even though my local transaction within the legal entity is going to be in INR but still I might need to do my financial reporting in USD in such cases my reporting currency will become USD so I will be choosing USD here 
okay so if my financial reporting currency is uh, usd then i of course need to also have an exchange rate defined between inr to usd which will be coming out from the adc default that is i need to also tag a exchange rate type over here but let's come to the exchange rate type in a while let's keep that aside and let's only focus on the currency for now if you remember i think we have also explored a little bit about the currency already in some of our previous episode so in this particular case the currency is only the accounting currency and the uh, there is no i mean reporting currency is also inr so there is uh, like maybe we we, could, we should have um, chosen a different currency here so that i could have shown some difference uh, but but we will do some exercises using different legal entity later maybe in the next episode to see the impact of different uh, reporting currency in the next episode maybe while discussing about the foreign currency revaluation process but to just give you an heads up there is an accounting currency there is a reporting currency and there is also a transaction currency let's say that uh, at the moment i am doing any transaction by default the transactions will be in the inr because it's very obvious that majority of my transactions are going to be uh, within india and that there's all going to be in inr so by default whatever transaction i do the system will come and refer to this field and by default the system is going to take the inr as a as a currency for all my transactions but there could also be a situation where a specific transaction or a specific purchase or sales i am doing it to a foreign vendor or a foreign customer in such cases only that particular transaction let's say that i have a vendor who is uh, where i am purchasing some special spare part and the vendor is based out of europe and in such cases within the sub ledger that is within the vendor account i can mention a foreign currency which could be a euro or which could be a usd based on whether your vendor is from the europe or from the us in such cases only that specific transaction let's say it's a vendor and you're creating a, a purchase order in such cases that particular transaction or a purchase order will be in the usd currency or in the euro euro so in such cases that actually becomes your transaction currency so you can override the currency on a specific sub ledger in such cases that particular transaction will be in a foreign currency if you are not overriding on a sub ledger level then by default the system will take this currency as a default currency on all the transaction let's say for example uh, i'm getting into uh, the 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 vendor section let me just refresh it yeah the vendor section and you see that this particular vendor is clearly a us supplier and you see here that for this particular vendor the currency is usd so when i am actually posting the the transactions using a purchase order pack picking uh, i mean uh, posting a product receipt and also posting a pro, uh, purchase invoice if you get into the voucher within a voucher transaction you will always see two columns for credit and debit which is uh, your uh, accounting currency which is by default in inr and the next column would be your uh, uh, reporting currency in this case it's going to populate the value for usd right so in this particular case you will have the currencies populated in both the uh, inr and also in the usd so it needs a current uh, uh, exchange rate value so that it can translate the indian rupee to the the uh, us dollars right so that particular exchange rate will be fetched from by default from this particular area in the system in the ledger so from here is where we will define the exchange rate for a specific date and that particular exchange rate will be used whenever i am using this vendor and doing a transaction this is just an heads up but don't worry in the next episode we will do some transactions and we will see all of this live and we will explore all of this in real and we'll do a demo on this so don't worry about it this is just a heads up and hope you understand this on a on a high level what i i really mean right so um so this is uh uh not only like uh, i can override like for example in this case within a vendor i did override on the sub ledger level with a different currency right so here i see that um the currency is usd 
So not only in the sub ledger level, but also in some cases you might need to post directly to the main account using a general journal that we have seen in some of our previous some of uh, our previous episodes, like three to four episodes before we did cover about general journal where we posted the transaction directly to the main account. So not only just we are overriding the um, the currencies within the uh, sub ledger level. But it is also possible in the ledger level. So which means that if I uh, go to the ledger. So here a chart of accounts. And that's our chart of account. Um, so these are all different main accounts, right? So let's say that uh, to give you an example. Let's say that's a creditors account, which is which can be mapped to all the vendor group belonging to the foreign vendors, for example. So even at the main account level, so even though I cannot post directly to this main account because uh, uh, do not allow manual entries checked doesn't make sense to post directly to the main account. But uh, just an example that I'm trying to show you that even at the main account level, let's say if it's a bank account or or in this case, it's just a creditor's account. It's also possible for you to directly tag a default currency here. It could be in this case USD because it's a uh, foreign account. So uh, you can even tag a default currency here directly at the main account level. Not only the currency, but you can also override the exchange rate type. Let's say, for example, the default exchange rate type is ADC mode default. But only for this particular main account, you can keep the exchange rate as default. So it can follow a different exchange rate than compared to my default exchange rate. So it is also possible to mention your exchange rate type and your uh, default currency directly at the main account level. And this particular uh, chart of account is shared across two different legal entities. One is ADC Motors, other is another legal entity. So you can even override the exchange rate type against a specific legal entity. For example, let's say that I have another legal entity which is sharing the same chart of account. So in such cases, I can also define a different exchange rate, let's say the same ADC motor in this case uh, for this particular legal entity if you need. Okay, so even in a case of that, even your account accounting currency for that matter for this, uh, sorry, the reporting currency for that matter for this particular uh, main account can also be different uh, if you want to uh, exchange rate there, right? So you can even override for a specific legal entity with a different exchange rate type if you want, okay? So uh, this is only a default area where the system will pick up the currency and the exchange rate type from. So uh, let me just remove all of this for now. Just just an example and go back here. Uh, so uh, if you just go in here, we did review this section in some of our previous episode already. So here is where you define all your currencies. Uh, if you are missing out, the, 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 this is actually a global form and this form can be viewed from any legal entity. So the view of this form from any legal entity is going to be the same. You don't need to get into every single legal entity and do the currency setup. Just do it once and it's same for all legal entity. And just in case if you are missing any currencies here, then you can always go and manually add the currency and map the ISO code for that particular currency and the symbol for that currency and so on and create your own currency here. And um, it's also possible that you can specify the rounding rule, which is one important setup which is available within the currency. So you can also set up the rounding rule on how many decimal units that you want to display as a part of that particular currency's norms. So in this case, I have pretty much all the currencies already predefined in the system. So I'm not going to add any currency. So it's already there. So the main currencies that I will be using for my legal entity is going to be INR. That's there. And the other currency is going to be USD and it's also there. So that's it. So these are two things that I will be using. And likewise, the reporting in this case is same. And uh, just to give you an idea or give you a given heads up, just in case, you know, if you have a reporting currency, which is other than INR, let's say, for example, USD, in such cases, system will have an additional column getting added against the credit and debit on your financial reporting, let's say, in a trial balance and in other reports as well. To give you an example, let me just get into my trial balance. <clears throat> 
and let me just calculate my trial balance for the ADC motor legal entity which doesn't have a reporting currency. So in this particular case I see that I have a debit and credit and the closing balance. That's just three columns and there's only one column for debit credit and closing balance right. So let me just go to a different legal entity let's say DMF. Let me first check in the ledger if I have a different uh, accounting and reporting currency. Okay, this is a very good example. Accounting currency is Euro and reporting currency is USD. So if I go and check the trial balance here, calculate. What is trial balance and other areas and features we will cover, we will do a separate episode on that. This is just to show you about the reporting and accounting currency to give you an example. So here you see that the credit debit and closing balance is this in the transaction currency and you also have the same in the reporting currency as well. So uh, this is the value, the debit value in the uh, euro and this is the value in the USD which is my reporting currency. So the currency conversion is happening because of the exchange rate type and exchange rate that I have defined inside the exchange rate type. So these are the sum of the impact of having a different reporting currency, right? So uh, of course more of this we will see in the next episode as I said, but yeah, this is the high level uh, heads up about the accounting, the reporting and the transaction currency. So now coming to the uh, accounting currency exchange rate type, right? Uh, there's no reporting currency exchange rate, only accounting currency report exchange rate type in my case. So for this, um, so I can just go double clicking here directly from the ledger or if you want a direct path, just go to the general ledger and um, under, this, under the currency area, you will have the uh, exchange rate type. Okay, so from here I can also go there or from here it will again take me to the same area in the system but it will taking me to the specific record and here it's taking me to all the records. So this is something that we have created in some of our earlier episode and these are the data that are by default available in this particular legal entity. Let's say this is an exchange rate type by default available in this particular legal entity. So in this particular exchange rate, uh, exchange rate type on the top I have some exchange rates defined. So these are different currency pairs and you can create an exchange rate type for all of this currency pairs. So in my case I will be using the ADC motor exchange rate type because this is what I have mapped into my general ledger. So into, into the ledger. So this is what I will be using. So I have also created an exchange rate uh, currency exchange rate. You can even go to this this screen directly through uh, the menu here. That is, this is currency rate type, right? This is the currency exchange rates, right? So if you go here, you can also go directly into that area and you can uh, choose from the default exchange rates. Sorry, uh, you can choose from the exchange rate types. In this case, it's our exchange rate type chooser. And uh, I have only declared or defined one currency pair which is USD to INR because in my currency, sorry, in my legal entity, I have transactions only with India and USA. So I don't need any other currency pair. So I'm only defining one currency pair and I'm also specifying the exchange rate for that particular currency pair for a specific date which is starting from this date and it will end at this particular date. Okay, so in this case, the system will always take this exchange rate uh, for all the transactions which is posted from uh, uh, after this particular date. The 76.3 is going to be the currency rate, right? <coughs> and um, you don't need to specify the rate in the reverse direction that is from INR to USD. If you just mention the currency rate from the USD to INR, system will automatically also consider INR to USD. So you don't need to um, define the currency rate for the vice versa. You just need to make sure you have the currency rate for all the currency pair combinations. That's enough. And uh, it's also possible to define, you know, the factor in this case, 
uh, it is uh, uh, 76.3 INR for 1 USD, right? You can change it to 10 USD, 100 USD, so you can change the factor. Normally, we use the uh, 1 USD factor, but if your currency uh, value is low, so if you want to change the uh, conversion factor, you can do so as well. And let's say that, of course, you are not going to maintain a fixed exchange rate throughout this date range. Every day, you will be having a different exchange rate uh, based on uh, the exchange rate service providers rate or based on various uh, agreement with your customers. So in such cases, you will be, uh, you know, automatically fetching the exchange rate from the external exchange rate service provider, or it is also possible to manually add the exchange rates. For the manual method, you will be using the add button and let's say today is uh, 7 of January and your exchange rate is let's say 80.56. So um, you then in such cases, this is going to be the exchange rate considered for all the transactions that I will be posting today. Okay. And maybe tomorrow because for tomorrow there's no exchange rate in the system. So likewise for tomorrow again you can manually go and add uh, tomorrow's exchange rate. So the system will consider that particular exchange rate for all the transactions for tomorrow, right? But uh, of course it is uh, practically we are not going to manually key in the exchange rate here by the add button. It is uh, uh, not a good option rather we always like to have the automation meaning the exchange rate automatically flowing in from the exchange rate providers there are many exchange rate providers available and we can use some of the out of the box exchange rate provider in this case to fetch the current exchange rate on a daily basis automatically right using a bad job so in such cases we need to set up the exchange rate providers in the system okay so next topic is going to be the exchange rate provider setup so we'll review that now but i hope you understand the manual method so you will be adding manually and you will be keying in the exchange rate on an everyday basis or based on the agreement on a weekly basis or you may even have certain exchange rate type where you have a fixed rate always for the entire year in such cases from the beginning of your year to end of the year you can mention one specific exchange rate and that could be an exchange rate that is uh, a default exchange rate for a specific main account or a specific transaction right so even that is possible so um, so to to now go and fetch the exchange rates automatically into the currency pair that is into this currency pair you will be uh, needing to create the exchange rate provider set you need to configure the exchange rate provider setup so for that here we set up the exchange rates here is where we tag the exchange rate into the exchange rate type and the exchange rate type is what we mapped into the general ledger or into the main account in different areas of the system we can override the default value from the ledger to any main account or transaction level so we did that using this exchange rate type because this exchange rate type is already mapped with the exchange rates and currency is what we already seen and we defined all the currency codes here so now the next is the configure exchange rate providers okay so if you go in here the microsoft dynamics 365 fno provides you with some default currency exchange rate providers out of the box so if you click on new there are three exchange rate providers already uh, made available by fno for you one is central bank of russian federation central bank of europe and the third one is a paid service and these two are out of the box free exchange rate provider that are available which fetches the exchange rate from central bank of europe this fetches it from central bank of russia for you and you will automatically update based on the bad jobs recurrence and that one is not free it is even though the system is having an out of the box integration available already by the exchange rate provider Oranda, which is one of the very popular exchange rate service provider. So the Microsoft already provides you with out of the box integration framework with the uh, Oanda uh, exchange rate service provider. You do not need to do any uh, coding or any uh, development work because the integration is already available. 
all you need to do is uh, purchase the subscription of Oanda and get the API key from them and just mention the API key uh, into the exchange rate provider and that's it will start working. So in this case, I'm going to choose all three and just say, okay. And you see within a fraction of second, the central bank of Russia is already pre-filled with the, the endpoints, service endpoints and the, and the URLs, right? And in the case of uh, central bank of Europe as well, you see that all of that are already pre-filled. You absolutely need not do anything here. But in the case of Oanda, you do not find a API key here because that is something that you need to get into the Oanda website and uh, purchase it. You also have uh, uh, the free uh, trial available. So if you just search, so if you go here and just start your trial, uh, you will get a seven day trial and uh, you can just fill all of this information as they say that um, they will when you fill out they will send you the api key to try it out for seven days and you can use that api key um, here and you can also try working with it if you are interested and um, so now that we have the exchange rate providers uh, created now the next setup is going to be is go to the currency area again so we've done this and now we need to import the exchange rates so go to the import exchange rate this will open this dialog and choose your exchange rate type that you want to use of course uh, in this case this is the exchange rate type that i will be using which is uh, adc default and the exchange rate service provider which is going to be or like three of them which we have just created and of course that particular form the exchange rate provider form is fully customizable you can add your own exchange rate providers if you have any other exchange rate providers as well but of course you need to code in that case and you need to establish the integration with the provider so in this case i'm going to use the central bank of europe and um, you have an ability to import today's date or you also have ability to choose the date range and you can uh, mention the date range the start date and end date uh, so in this case i'm going to do the today's date and when i turn on this particular switch then it automatically creates the currency pairs and their corresponding exchange rate for today in our case, if you notice, I only created one currency pair, which is from INR to USD. I do not have any other currency pairs. If I turn this on, the system will automatically dump with all possible currency pairs. Just in case you always want only one currency pair and you do not want to just populate uh, your system with a multiple currency pair, you need to turn off the switch before you are importing the exchange rate. In this case, I want to demonstrate you how the system uh, creates multiple currency pairs so i am going to turn the, keep this on and likewise if you want to override the existing exchange rates like for example in my case there's already an exchange rate created let's say for today's date in such cases if you want to override it with the very most recent exchange rate it can override it um if you are choosing a date range here then if you want to just set a single rate then you can turn this on so even though your date range is for a month still there will be only one particular exchange rate that will be set for that particular date range by turning on this particular switch and if you want to prevent the bad job running or import of the exchange rate on national holiday like a saturday or sunday you can turn this on so the bad job doesn't run or maybe uh, the importing process will not happen for national holidays in that case in this case i'm uh, manually importing my exchange rate from this service provider into this exchange rate type by clicking on the ok button in the dialog but it's not very rec highly it's not recommended or it's it's not feasible for us to every day go and manually run this and import our exchange rate we don't we want to automate this process so in such cases of course you will have to turn on the bad job and you will have to set up your recurrence rule here 
so you can mention your start date if you do not want this to end forever then just say no end date and you do not want to run every minute of course but you want to run it on every uh, once every day or maybe you want to run once every hour then you can set up your bad job accordingly and the system will the bad job will automatically be triggered and it will be picked up and it will automatically run and import the exchange rate from that particular exchange rate provider based on the recurrence rule that you set up here in the bad job so in this case i'm not going to set up any bad job i'm going to uh, directly run it manually so i will be going and just closing this and clicking on okay so now the system is importing the current exchange rate so the operation is completed if you check the message the operation is completed and you will see that around the uh, uh, there are multiple exchange rates have been loaded by the provider okay so there are also some warnings maybe we'll check that later so if I now get into the exchange rate type and exchange rates, initially I only had one currency pair and now I'm expecting all the currency pairs that are supported by my exchange rate provider and you will also see the exchange rates getting populated, most recent exchange rates getting populated here in this particular section. So that is a very straightforward and very simple process guys. Hope you understand this uh, process of foreign currency exchange rates and currencies. Uh, but in the next episode we will try to do some foreign currency transactions and we will try to do some foreign currency reevaluation process. Until then take care. See you again in the next episode.